on this James the Bike Guy, we're taking a look at the Trek Verve 3. This is a 2020 model of the Comfort Hybrid from Trek, and we're gonna go over some of the features and designs of this bike, as well as, of course, check out what it weighs. But before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you can see more videos like this into the future. So the Trek Verve is a really nice hybrid, and in fact, it's the highest in the range of the Verve series. The Verve is the more comfortable version of Trek's lineup. They've got the FX bike, which is a little bit sportier, a little bit more fitness based. And then they have the Dual Sport, which is a little more multi-use trail designated where it could go in more of a, an off-road situation. Now, I hesitate with saying that because this Verve is actually pretty capable on its own. It's gonna be running some pretty substantial 700 by 45C tires. So you could absolutely take this on a gravel path or a packed uh, hiking trail, something like that if you wanted to. But it's really gonna be designed for the rider that wants a comfortable bike to either ride with their kids, kids or take out on a bike trail to be able to get some fitness. But prioritizing some comfort over say just the lightest weight or, or most speed. Now the bike does use what they call an alpha gold aluminum so it's got pretty nice looking drawn tubing. Uh, the welds look pretty nice on the bike and then it's actually going to run an aluminum fork. So this is an aluminum fork with a little bit of recurve to it. You can see it bends forward. And what that allows for is it actually makes the bike uh, have a little bit of give in the front end when you hit a bump. And that's something interesting to note. So the Verve series came out a couple of years ago and it replaced the 7000 series from Trek. So they actually removed the suspension fork and they put those wider 45C tires. And the reason being is the position of this bike, if we actually get down here, you can see that the seat is a little bit further back on the bike, making it have more weight on the rear wheel than the front wheel. So the suspension forks up front weren't actually doing all that much. And so they removed that to help lighten up the bike. And these actually do ride really well. Now the main difference between say this Verve 3, the 2 and the 1 is actually gonna come to componentry. So on the Verve 3, it's gonna get a suspension seat post, just like the Verve 2. It's gonna get an adjustable stem, just like the Verve 2, so you can raise and lower that. But you're gonna get these isozone handlebars, which have isozone gel integrated into the handlebar to make for a really comfortable cockpit. It's of course gonna have their Boulevard saddle on the back, and this Bontrager saddle is gonna be pretty dang comfortable. The other thing that's gonna change is the componentry. So the Verve 3 is the first of the Verve series to have this simplified two by nine drivetrain. So it's got nine speeds in back and then it's got two rings up front. And the beauty with that is it's gonna be quite a bit easier to operate. You've only got a high and a low on the left side and then you've got one through nine on the right side to be able to adjust the gearing. So on the back, it's gonna be running a Acera M3000 rear derailleur. It's gonna have an HG 200 1136 nine speed cassette up front. This crank set is gonna be the Shimano MT210 crank set running dual rings of 46 30 tooth. So that's gonna be a nice setup for a brake set on this bike. This is getting Shimano's hydraulic MT200 201 combo. So it's hydraulic brakes, pretty nice levers on this bike and it works out pretty dang well. Now, of course, the front end is using what Trek calls their through skew, which is basically a captured skewer, which makes it easier to be able to mount the wheel on and off, and it maintains the alignment. So when you're taking your wheel off, maybe putting it in your car or something like that, you don't have to worry about getting the wheel aligned back into the frame. The through skew is gonna help with that. Now, a couple of features on the frame that we should really talk about. The first is gonna be the Duotrap S port. This port allows you to put a computer sensor into the frame and be able to track via Bluetooth your speed and cadence all the way up to your phone or things like that, which brings us to 
the blender mount that's on this stem. So the blender system allows uh, a mount to go on top. You can see it's actually integrated into the stem. You can remove this if you want to, but it, what it allows for is the ability to put a computer on here, put a cell phone mounted on your handlebar, or even a blinking light while keeping the cockpit nice and clean. It runs these Bontrager satellite flat pedals. And then in back next to the disc brake, this is actually gonna run a rear mount kickstand mount. So that means you can add a rear mount kickstand to the bike and it keeps it out of the way. It also has a mount up front to where you could run a traditional kickstand if you so wanted to, but the rear mount makes for a little bit more stable setup. You also have rear rack and fender mounts, so you can run racks and fenders on this bike. Quick release for the seat post, which I know a lot of people like. And then up front on that aluminum fork that we looked at, it is gonna have front rack and fender supports. So now that we've taken a look at the features and design of this Trek Verve 3, let's go ahead and find out what this bike weighs. So the actual weight of the Trek Verve 3 in a size medium comes in and weighs 29.10 pounds. Well, thanks for watching this video on the Trek Verve 3. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. While you're at it, leave a thumbs up. It really lets me know you enjoyed the video.